So in last class, we discussed about public key encryption. So can you tell me the basic what happens in public key encryption? Or asymmetric key encryption? Just tell me the basic definition, how it happens. Question is, what happens in public key encryption? Last class we discussed about public key encryption, right? Random public key encryption key hai. Divya Lidomo sender have a key which he used to encrypt the message. Okay, then Iman basic ke ko like This is just basic encryption. What's the difference between symmetric and asymmetric encryption? Difference between symmetric and asymmetric key encryption. So, ma'am, in symmetric key, they use the same key for okay. the sender and the receiver. Mm -hmm. But in for asymmetric, they use different key uh, for sender and receiver. As for the sender, they use a public key. Yes. And the receiver use a, a private key to uh, decrypt the message. Okay, very good. So that's the basic of public key encryption. So in this unit, it's like mostly about public key encryption. So today we will see one very popular and important algorithm, which is RSA algorithm. Okay. Wait, let me share my screen. There is no placement drive exam, right? Because why there are this so what happened to means others? So RSA algorithm. So what is RSA algorithm? RSA is a very popular public key encryption method. Its name comes RSA, RSA because there are three inventors. One is Revest, one is Shamir, and one is Adelman. So the initials of these three people form the RSA algorithm, Revest, Shamir, and Adelman. So this RSA algorithm is like very popular one and most people use this one and it is considered as the most secure way of encryption so what happens here of course this is just the basic uh, method of any encryption sender will send data with the help of the key means that will be the receiver's public key then once it reads the ciphertext it will Send to the receiver. Then receiver will decrypt this data with its own private key. Now, what are the features of your RSA algorithm? This algorithm is like involves lots of uh, mathematics. Not means uh, involves mathematics, but it's kind of interesting 
unlike your public uh, those symmetric key algorithms so this rsa algorithm mostly involved with the prime numbers okay then the integers used by this method should be the sufficiently large to make it difficult remember in previous in symmetric places what we do we try to get um, long keys okay but again there were some problems with the long keys but the preferable that it should be a sufficiently long key so that the opponent or cryptanalyst cannot uh, decrypt your message or cannot get the key so here as well since we will mainly deal with the numbers and prime numbers the numbers or integers should be sufficiently large so that it's become difficult to solve okay so like the normal public key encryption process there will be two sets of key one is the private key and the other is your public key so now let's see how does it work it will go like step by step process so first is we need to generate a modulus okay i'll give you an example so it will be very easy for you guys to understand so first just see the steps how um, means what are the steps after that i'll show you how we I means i'll just give you example how we can do it so first step is we will just generate an rsa modulus so what is rsa modulus first we need to select two prime numbers and we have to find the product of those two prime numbers okay then that product should be like large number of course so that product key will be used in um, combination of different other numbers to form two keys okay for now just remember we have selected two prime numbers and the product of two prime number is n so p and q are selected prime numbers okay next step is we need to calculate a phi function it is also known as torsion function okay so this function equation for this function is p minus u1 and q minus 1 then we need to find a derived number e this e should be the co prime number and it will have two properties okay and the properties are like it should be it should lie between 1 and this calculated phi n and uh, it should be co prime to this phi n and n2 okay but the simple way of uh, determining this e is that you just need to calculate it so this e and this n will form your public key so in this step we have calculated e and d so this is your public key which is just pair of your n the product and e is the key you generated from this phi n function next we have private key so for the private key we again need to select a d these numbers we need to select or calculate okay and this d will be calculated from the three numbers we have used previously p q and e so mathematically we can just use like this uh, ed means it just extended euclidean number so it is just one mod of pi n okay mod of phi n means p minus 1 q minus 1 this is just replacement okay see phi n means p1 minus q1 okay so this is just one modulus of this this is your euclidean distance okay so next we need to do the encryption so p e is like uh, p is the private key so this is just the plain text p means plain text here so plain text will be uh, some kind of number then we will find the power of e e we have selected in the first um, step then the, after that we will do this perform pe mod n so for decryption it will be the cipher text and the selected d mod n i know I, i'm telling the steps just like this it's a bit confusing at this moment right not easy to follow up so i'll just give you an example and we will see what are the steps okay <laughs> wait let me share 
So just see, wait a minute, see it carefully and it will be easier for all of you to understand RSA very easily. Okay. Uh. Okay, so what we need to do, for example, first what we do, we just do encryption. The main process of any encryption decryption is that first we encrypt the message, then uh, we decrypt it, right? For example, suppose what we do here is encryption, right? For encryption, my key is, I'm saying, 5 and 11. Uh, no, let's take 14. Okay, this is my key for encryption. This is the key. I'll tell you later how we got 15 and 5, okay? So, for the time being, just know this is the key for encryption, okay? And my plain text is B. Hmm. Just, just example B. Of course, when you will send message, it will be a longer message. Just for the time being, just think it's B. Just one letter word. So, of course, I cannot send it directly as B, so I'm just numbering it. Uh, if I go like uh, A, B, C, D as number 1, 2, 3, 4, so B will be your number 2, correct? Right? So this is my encryption key, and this is the plain text I want to send. So what was the equation for encryption? What was the equation for encryption? It was... P power E mod N. Okay. So if we do P power E mod N. So what will be our main cipher text? The equation is 2 power 5. This is our plain text. And this is our key. This 5 will come here. Okay. This 5 is this 5. And this two is this two okay so this is mod n what is n our n is 14 here okay the equation was what p e mod n correct so here n is equal to 14 and p is plain text which is 2 here and E is the key. So this 5 is our key. So I'll come to this part again later. Just for the time being, this is the encryption. So for encryption, I have E and N. So remember, we generate a key. How we generate a key? It's a combination of N and E or E and same thing. It's just the pair of N and E. So, this is our key. So, key is N or E or E and anything. So, up to this portion, is it clear? So, 2 power 5, what is 2 power 5? 2 power 5, it's 32. Right? So, 32 mod 14. So, can you tell me what will be the answer here? 32 mod 14 means we need to find the remainder. What is the remainder? If you divide 32 by 14, what will be the remainder? Or remainder? Fourteen into two, how much? Twenty-eight, then thirty-two minus twenty-eight, what? It's four. This is our modulus. Okay. So this is our ciphertext. Okay. 
if I say four, if I go like alphabetically, what will be the letter here, alphabet here? B is two, then C and D, three and four. So our cipher text is D. Yes, correct. Cipher text is D. Okay, so first tell me, is this part clear up to encryption? So for encryption, I'm telling you, this is the key. 5 and 14, how we generate the key is the combination of N and E. Okay, so N is 14 here, E is 5 here. Now I have a plain text B. Okay, B I'm just converting into just number which is 2. So equation for encryption is this, correct? P, plain text power of E mod M. So E is 5 here and mod 14. If you just calculate, it's just 32 mod 14. It's 4. Okay, so 4 we can just say it's D. This is our 4. Up to this portion clear? I'll tell you later how we get the E and all. So this is encryption. So for decryption, what will be the process? Decryption, I'm just telling you for the time being, the key is 11 and 14. Okay. The pair is D and E. So you can, sorry, not D and E, it's N. D and N. So key for encryption and D. So this N is known to everyone. Okay. So N part is known to everyone. Just that this E part and D part is not known to others. Okay. This N is common in both the key of encryption and decryption. So this is the pair for decryption key. This is our key. So what's the uh, equation for this? Decryption equation is C power D mod of N. C power mod of means what we need to do? What is our this C power D mod N. What is C? C is our 4, correct? D. And D is here is 11, correct? 11, then mod 14. Okay. So can you tell me what is 4 power 11 mod 14? What will be the value? Okay, first just tell me what is 4 power 11. Just use your calculator. Okay, I, I can just... Okay, this here, yeah, I don't get it. So 4 power 11 is 4194304. You guys also check in your calculator. 4194304. This is your, this is just intermediate step. Okay, this is 4 power 11. Okay, 4 power 11 is this one. So now, our main task is that we need to find the remainder. Uh, if we divide this value with means by 14, we need to do it this. Sharing is not visible. Okay, wait, let me unshare and share again. Is it visible now? Okay. Okay. So 4 power 11 is this number and this number we need to divide by 14. So can you tell me the remainder? 
Okay, there's a big easy process I can tell you. First, just uh, divide this number with the 14. Just use your calculator. Okay, so if you divide this number by 14, what will be the answer? I'm using my uh, phone here. So if I divide it, and the value I'm getting is 2, uh, 299593.143. Okay, this is the value I'm getting in my calculator. So this is by 14. So the easy way to find it out is I'm going to uh, sub subtract or minus this decimal part from this whole number okay if I uh, subtract this this decimal part from this whole number what will be the answer what will be the number I want to divide this decimal part from this whole number. This is the number gener uh, 4 power 11 divided by 14. If I minus it decimal, what will be the answer? Only this part will remain, right? So this is 0.143. Now this part you multiply with 14. Okay. If you multiply it by 14, what will be the answer? answer in my phone or calculator I can say is 2.002 so which is equivalent to 2 so what is the 2 what is our cipher text see 2 means B okay so this 2 means our B this is how we do encryption and decryption okay so if you need to find modulus uh, uh, power of something, then modulus of some particular number, you can just use this method. You just uh, minus the decimal part from the whole number, then you just multiply it by uh, your divisor. I guess this is small mathematics rules we got during our school time, I guess. So anyways, so first for encryption, we have these keys. So N is known to everyone. This N part is used in both encryption key and the decryption key. That means for both in public and private key. Right. Just that E and D. How we need to calculate E and D. I am going to tell it you now. Okay. So for encryption, this is the algorithm. And for decryption, this is the algorithm. So is this part clear? First tell me that one. Encryption, decryption, is this part clear to everyone? Yes, no. If yes, then I'll tell you how uh, we can generate the keys. Yes, okay. So this part is clear. So now I can tell you how we can generate the key. Okay. So now I will tell you the step by step process. First, the first step. First step, how we need to create the key, okay? So first, what we need to do, we need to find two prime numbers and we can select any prime numbers and those, I can just say P and Q. So select two prime numbers. Of course, like you should like take very big big prime number so that it's difficult for the opponent to like um, 
guess it or hack your whole thing so just for example i'm just taking easy easy the small one so i'm just taking p equal to 2 and q equal to 7 these are the prime numbers i have selected okay so next step what we need to find a product we need to find a product so product is nothing but your n correct so n is equal to p into q 2 into 7 equal to 14 so this n we are using it for both generating the key for public and the private key so n is the same thing and it is nothing but the product of the two prime numbers we have selected initially so of course in practical cases they always select the big prime numbers here just for example just take these two so this 14 you know how we got this 14 is this part clear so next step is now what we need to find the phi function third step is yeah uh, i just did it like uh, split it these two parts so next we need to find the torsion function or we can also say phi function so here i am giving this equation p minus 1 and q minus u uh, 1 so but i want to tell you how we get this equation okay now what is this uh, okay let me tell you what is this uh, function what's the properties what is the property of this thing is that we need to consider a number e Okay, we need to consider a number E such that E is co prime to phi n and number n. Okay, this part I have written here. So just keep it like this. So I need to find, calculate this phi n. So for that, I need to calculate E. Okay, so what is the product? What is the product? product is fourteen right that means what we have to just list out all the numbers from one to n so next is just we need to calculate the phi n I'm already telling you that it's just p minus one and q minus one just want to show you how we can get it okay so suppose number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and fourteen so we need to find co primes co prime means there is no common factor with this particular n so our n is 14 so we need to find all the co prime numbers so what is co prime number to find the co prime numbers we need to find first common factors what are the common factors for 14 common factors for 14 first is two of course I can cut this out the so one is factor of everyone so I'm not going to consider this thing so other than one I'll just select all the numbers which is factor of 14 and then we'll also find out what are the other common factors of 14 okay so just find the common factors with 14 one is factor everyone i am not going to this one so again two if i cut the two now you can see i have to cut out all the even numbers correct so if i'm two is a common factor of 14 that means all the even numbers are also common factors with 14 so i need to cut out all the even numbers 6 8 10 12 okay now 7 again i need to cut because 7 is a factor of 14 correct so how many numbers left now 1 2 3 4 5 
and 6. And this phi n, that means phi n should be 6. There are 6 co-prime numbers. 6 co-prime numbers means there is no common factors. So these are the numbers. These are co-primes. These 6 numbers are co-primes. That means it doesn't share any common factor with this n. Okay. Now if I get the 6, I need to get number 6, right, for phi n. This phi n is your co-prime, which is number 6. So you don't need to do all this calculation for easier way. The equation is this, which is p minus 1, p is 2, 1, n is 7 minus 1 is 6, 6 into 6, 6. Okay, so this is the easy equation. You can do it like that. Just that I'm telling you how we can find the co-prime numbers. Is this one clear? Phi n or torsion function is nothing but your co-prime. And this is the easy equation how we can find it. But other than this equation, how we can find the co-prime is like this. Okay. So our next step is we need to find e see we have just n here we still don't know the e here so now we need to find e select e so to select the e for encryption there are certain properties what are the properties so for choosing e the properties are first it should lie between um, this E should lie between phi n and 1, correct? It's the same with your uh, slide here, okay? Then it should co-prime with n and phi n, okay? This is your number one property. Second property is that it should be co-prime with n and phi n, both this. Okay, so these are the criteria for selecting E. So how, what are our options? Okay, if I say it should lie between 1 and 5, 9, 5, 9 is 6. So our options are what? What are our options? It can be just 2, 3, 4, 5, correct? It should lie between 1 and 5 and 5 and is 6. So only available options are 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the second property is it should be co-prime with n and 5 and 5. Now co-prime means what? It should not share any common factors. So of course I cannot do and I cannot use 4. And because 4 and 2 both are factors of 14, correct? So I cannot use this. Now again, I cannot use 3 also. Why? It's a factor for 6. It should not be co-prime with both n and phi n. So only options I have left with is 5. So this is our E. And see here, the key is 5 and 12. <coughs> is this clear? So our option, only option for E is 5. I know I have taken small, small numbers, so it seems easier, but the whole logic is just like this. So did you get it? How we select prime? It should lie between 1 and 5, 9, 5, 9, 6, 1 and 6, only this number. It should not be co-prime with 10 and 5, 9. So only options left with 5. So our public key, is n and e correct so e is your 5 and n is our 14 that's how we got this key for 5 and 14 okay now our second part is select d select d is for encryption we have only generated public key now we also need to generate the private key as well right so for here the condition is or you can say property of choosing d is that 
it should satisfy the condition d into e mod by n it should be equal to 1 this is our condition to select d okay we don't know d we need to find a d but e we already know it's 5 right 5 into d and mod pi n phi n means our uh, 6 right so we should get a equation means we need to find a value for d which will satisfy these conditions if i'm multiplying this d with 5 that means what it's a multiple of 5 correct it's a multiple of 5 and that multiple of 5 if we divide it by 6 the remainder should be 1 that's our condition for selecting <coughs> d sorry so if i say multiple of 5 there can be lots of uh, numbers of course let's see some of the numbers are 5 10 then 15 20 25 30 and so on right these are the multiple of 5d why it's multiple of 5d because it's 5d right because i'm multiplying it 5d so now we need to find a value if we divide it by 6 remainder should be 1 so can you tell me what will be the remainder of these numbers if we divide it by 6 if we do 5 divided by 6 the remainder will be we need to find mod 6 okay it's going to going to end in 5 minutes anyway so if we divide 5 by 6 the remainder will in this case will be 5 of course right then for 10 if we divide 6 remainder will be 4 5 into 5 uh, uh, sorry 6 into uh, 1 6 10 uh, 10 minus 6 is 4 for 15 it's 3 correct and for 20 it will be uh, 6 into 3 18 20 minus 18 is 2 so can you see the pattern it's like 5 4 3 2 i can just follow the pattern itself right so these are the things means remainder we get when we divide by 6 okay so this pattern will keep repeating after this also okay this is the 6 6 um multiple of six so every six multiple of of course is also a multiple of six so it's just zero so this whole pattern will keep repeating in all the multiples of five okay so we need to select a number for which we will get a remainder one okay in this case it's 25 but i'm not selecting the 25 here i have selected 11 right so just to make it a bit more tough i just chose 11 so if i do 5 into 11 you can select any number any number where you get a remainder one because the condition is one I'm just not taking the 25 here because it will be easier. So I took it 11 here in this case and I just did mod pi n equal to 1. Sorry, here you can just write 6, correct? So 55 mod 6 is equal to 1. Uh, 6 into 9, 54. 55 minus 54 is 1. This is correct so this is the whole process you can select anything you can even select this 5 if you want to make it 25 then it will be multiple of 5 into 5 okay but just to make it a bit tough i just selected here for which it becomes 55 so that's all about rsa algorithm so once you select this d i have selected d our pair is
D and E. So I selected 11 and sorry, N is 14. Is it clear everyone? You can select 25 also. It can be anything wherever you got remainder 1. So this is the whole process. Okay. So that's all about RSA. This is the concept you need to follow up for the RSA. RSA in a simple way. Is it clear to everyone? If not, I can continue next class. But this meeting is going to end soon. So, clear everyone? This is the encryption decryption. Here I showed how we can select E and D and what are the functions behind. Okay, okay for everyone. Okay, I'm ending the meeting. Okay, thank you all. Only three now. Thank you.